Yes, Lord, we are praying for all the vessels that are going to be used tonight and the rest of the program into the hands of God, that the Holy Spirit will take the stage, uh, will have his way in the name of Jesus. Uh, the Spirit of God will fill them up in the name of Jesus. Uh, the men and women that will be ministering the word of God, that the Spirit of God will fill their mouth up in the name of Jesus, uh, that the Spirit itself will speak unto us in the name of Jesus. None of any man and all of God is what we pray for in the name of Jesus. If you can help me sing, take the stage, Lord, and have your way with everyone on the program in the name of Jesus. Le baro sataya, le kataya dada. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel. We don't want a performance tonight, oh God. We want to move of you in the name of Jesus. We've come to experience you at the lake at Toseleba. Holy Spirit, at Talibro, Makanda Lebaros, Ratani Miriata, Le Bandebea, Ekanda Lebaro, Le Brata de Belebelebe, Ratani Miria, Ekababa, Le Brata Tayada. Take the stage, O oh Lord. Take the stage, O oh Lord. Have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way. Come on, let's go. 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 Let's
Shall we be upstanding, please? Praise the Lord. Always. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, with all your heart. Oh, praise the Lord. With all your heart. Oh, oh praise the Lord. Sing along with me. We thank you, Father. We bless you, Father. May your name be praised. 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 Ya la 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 la
that as we are gathered here as children of God, if any demonic spirit rises up, yes. any wizardry, any sorcery, Jesus. any divination, Jesus. any occultic manipulation Jesus. that will rise up against us, let there be fire! Amen. Let there be fire! Amen. To consume them, shall we pray? Shall we pray? <laughs> faithful indeed he is lord even in the grave we want to welcome you into the house this evening we want to welcome you to piwc metro city virginia we are so happy to have you in the house with us this evening if you're watching online we want to welcome you into the house of the lord amen we want to praise this evening and so join us even as we give praise unto the lord hallelujah Jesu una shela kabari Kaliba kala di bitaruna Io io kabari Io kabari 
Jesu na shela Kaliba Kaliba karibi yo 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 Bring it down bring it down bring it down Okay so I just want to tell you the meaning of the song The song says Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Yes, yes he died on the cross of Calvary. That's all the song is, right? And so even as we're singing, we just want you to dance with us. We want you to rejoice with us because indeed Jesus Christ died on Calvary for our sins and he is Lord. Amen. So we're going to take it again. It's a very simple song. Are you ready? One more time. Let's go. Jesu na sela Calvary. Kali Kala di vita runa io io cavari io cavari c'è solo una sera c'è solo una sera cavari caliba caliba cala di vita io 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 cavari io cavari c'è solo una sera Come on. Say, neighbor, are you ready to dance? I want to teach you something. 
When we go like this, you say, but I'm sorrow. When we go like this, you say, but I'm sara. And then we turn around, okay? So we say, but I'm sorrow, but I'm sara. But I'm sorrow, but I'm sara. Ten de de da, ten de de da, ten. Come on, let me hear you say. Say, but I'm sorrow, but I'm sara. But I'm sorrow, but I'm sara. Ten de de da, ten de de da. Come on, this side, let me see you. Come on, say, but I'm sorrow, but I'm sara. But I'm sorrow, but I'm sara. Ten de de da, ten de da. Little side, let me see you. Come on, say, but I'm sorrow, but I'm sara. But I'm sorrow, but I'm sara. Ten de de da, ten de. Give it up for Jesus in this place. Come on, somebody, let me hear you pray, go crazy for Jesus in this place. Come on, somebody, just begin to worship it. Begin to worship it, worship it, worship it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We can help you have our seats. Amen. All right, we can all have our seats. Sorry. I'll come back with a fire. Don't worry. <laughs> Jesus is alive. Praise God. Hallelujah. We want to welcome everyone into our second night of our historic PIWC Metro City Easter Convention. Praise the Lord. The blood of Jesus. You see the folks who are now talking. That's how I know you were in here last night. <laughs> the blood of Jesus. 
That's right, that's right. We thank God for another day for being here tonight. As we are getting ready to celebrate this Easter and we are getting ready for our second night of this convention, we want to leave a few minutes for our testimonies. Typically on a regular Sunday, we usually don't have a lot of time. But with this being a convention, it's very essential that as believers, we are able to give testimonies to encourage one another. So I want to leave a few minutes for any testimonies, any Bible recitations that anybody might have to exhort the whole group. There is no one else like you, Jesus, Kosenitobabire, Jesus. There is no one else like you. Jesus, go send it over, be real. Jesus. The reason why I'm singing this song is because for the past couple of two, admit almost two months, I haven't known where I have been. There are so many attacks that I've been experiencing from every angle. I remember entering 2024 and the Lord telling me that this is a set time for favor. And arise and shine because my light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. The funny thing is, we all know what happens when the Lord says, you are highly favored. And I can clearly see the test, the trials, the tribulations. It got to a point, I would just sit down and I'd say, God, what is going on? I don't know what is going on. I don't know what to do. It got to a point, I felt like I'm going so far that I cannot come back. And I, all I knew to do is that just talk to God. I couldn't even pray the way I wanted to. And so many things, some of you know, I lost three people just from last year to this year. And two people this year. When I, whenever I thought like, oh, this is done, then there's like another problem after another problem after another problem. I can't begin to mention all of it. But if I'm standing here, Easter Convention, and I'm here on this stage in the presence of my king, there is nothing else I can say but to say that there is no one else like him. He is the one that has sustained me, that has kept me. And I stand here and not just testify, but speak to his glory that the battle, I will run the race, I will finish the course, and I will get the prize. Amen. Indeed, there's no God like our God. Hallelujah. Anybody else come in? All right, if we don't have anybody else, I want to humbly welcome us to the administration of our lovely youth choir. Give it up for them while they come up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. was a wretch, I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you 
held me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and then at the cross you paid the debt i owe broke my chains freed my soul for the first time i had hope thank you jesus for the blood applied thank you jesus it has washed me wide thank you jesus you have saved You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood.
our fathers, today's a special day. Our fathers want to sing for us. So I want to humbly call up Elder Dr. Kosi Opon and Elder Odate Mills to come and sing for us. Praise the Lord. Before we read, before we sing, we're reading from John 19, 1 through 19. John 19, 1 to 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns, and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and the officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, You took him and you, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I found no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law. And according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said, don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you will have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of greater sin. Hallelujah. And our song will be in P. Oh, want to me know what ya sama so in good in the Oh, run to me know Hallelujah. We're still in the time of worship. Hallelujah. Shall we rise even as we just go before the throne room of grace? And tonight, um, I just want to remind us that there was a man, a man that sinned and brought us where we are. And then there was another man that had to lay down his life to change the course of history. Not only in the past, not only in the present or the now, not only in the future, but in all of eternity. In fact, it was predestined. He had to come lay down his life for us. And tonight, just a quick reminder that 
we all were bound for hell. No exception. We all were bound for hell. So earlier when I came with that kind of energy, it was from a place of me realizing that it was only one direction and one path I was on, and it was on the path to hell. So picture this for a moment. You're in a courtroom. You've been, you've been charged for your crimes, your sins. You know perfectly well you committed. In fact, you're guilty of it, to which your, your, your lawyers could not even defend your case. And then the jury goes out, they come back in, and even before judgment will be passed, the judge says, you are a free man. You are a free woman. Tonight, I want us to worship from a place of a free people. We are a forgiven people. We are a free people. We are a redeemed people. We are a ransomed people. Our salvation was paid for with his life. There was no one worthy, no one worthy to open the scroll but the Lamb of God. Tonight, just begin to worship. Begin to open your mouth and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. God, we glorify your holy name, O Lord. We lift up your holy name tonight, O God. We declare there is none like you, O Lord. Father, we declare that you are Lord, our Lord. We lift up your holy name, O God. We lift up your holy name, O God. All creation, O God. We declare that you are holy, O God. King of kings, the Lord of lords. You were crucified and we celebrate you, Lord. Tonight we worship you, Lord. Tonight the souls that you born, Lord, tonight we worship you. We our hearts out to you, Lord. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy are you, Lord, God Almighty. You alone who was worthy to open the scroll. You alone who was worthy to come in for our sins. Tonight it is you, Lord, my God. It is you, Lord. It is you, Lord, that we worship. And so when the song says, Oh, be lifted above all other gods, we lay our crowns and worship you. Oh,
I want to go beyond celebration. I want you to be the mandate. I want you to be the resurrection. I want you to depict what I did. I don't want you to just celebrate. I want people to see it through you. I want you to become the resurrection. I want you to become the life. I want you to become that which you celebrate. It is not a celebration. It is a mandate. It is not just a celebration. It is not just a celebration. I want people that can depict, people that will represent, people that will show that which I have done. People that would show that I have done this. People that would show the resurrection. People that would show the death. People that would show that indeed I'm no longer in the grave. That your life will show that no longer are you also in the grave. That the life that you live will show that I live. 
that the life that you live will show that I am the king of kings, that I am the Lord of lords, that I reign in heavens and the earth, that all power in heaven and on earth belongs to me. So I want you to go beyond celebration. I want you to go beyond celebration. I want you to see the calling in this. I want you to see the mandate. I want your life to represent that which I have done. You can't be sick. You can't be tired. You can't be weary and be celebrating resurrection. You can't be dead and be celebrating resurrection. Your life must be an example. That is what I want to do through you. That is what I want to show the world through you. So I want you to accept the mandate. Will you accept the mandate to show that I live, that I died but I rose again, that death cannot hold me down, that I am beyond everlasting? I am calling you into this mandate. Would you accept? Would you accept? I need people that will accept that I can unleash into the world to show that I live. Your life to testify that I live, that I am king, that I am alive, that I'm no longer dead. That is the mandate that I give you. I put you in front, in front of my enemies. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I make room for two. It's you and I, Jesus. Now speak for me. Speak for yourself. Come on.
from generation after generation. We say you, it is only you, God, that matters. Jesus, it is only you alone that matters in our lives. Continue to reign in our lives and in your church. As a ransom people, Lord, we offer nothing. We have nothing offered fit for a king than our hearts, than our hearts of worship. And tonight we lay before you. May our worship be acceptable in your sight. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we have worship. Amen.
indeed it's always about the blood of Jesus. I think, you see, Metro City, we attract top level talent. I think anyone who was here last night can testify that we hit a different realm. And tonight, we are about to go deeper. We're about to go deeper. With that being said, I want to humbly welcome you to the glorious ministration of Minister F.A. Grace. Hallelujah. Amen. This was for me. Please do a better one for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Do it better unto Jesus. Make a joyful noise unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. I bring you greetings from Ghana. Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve. I don't take it for granted. Thank you so much. With all due respect, can we all be outstanding? And let's give Jesus all the glory. Can we just thank God for the cross? Thank you. Can we just thank God for dying on the cross for our sins? Open your mouth and just bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Thank you, O God, for the blood. Masaya da da ba ko shati anda ya ba ba ba. Make it take it up, ba ba ba. Saka ta da ba ba ba. Ye kita ya ta ya ba 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 ba. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. It is the reason we are here tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At this very moment, I just want you to open up your heart and your mind. And let the spirit of the living God take over. Even as we lift up worship to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Father, we exalt you. Glory. Glory, glory to the land. Glory, glory, glory. We lift our voice. 
voices and praise you are the lamb upon the throne for you are glorious and worthy to be praised you are the lamb the lamb upon the throne now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise the sound oh we raise the sound it's for your dire by your hand your dire for he is God and God alone Hallelujah. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne, we raise a sound. We raise a sound to you tonight. We raise a sound. For He is God and God and God alone. For He is God.
get to heaven. Ah, we are raising a song to the King of Kings. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, 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 in the language of the spirit come on lift your voices and just bless in the language of the spirit he pray another, it's Sayande. He pray another, oh, he call ya da da ba sakata. My God, my God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Death could not hold you down. song in my spirit covering a so we and 
Calvary, na Jesus we, oh we are a heart.
complete silence in the house of the Lord. We have worshipped him. We have lifted up his name. The theme of this convention is the blood of Jesus, my ransom. Tonight, any prisoner we release you by the blood of the Lamb. We release you by the blood of the Lamb. Makandale base kato. Spirit of the Lord is saying we should let him flow. This convention, let us not rush him. Open up your spirit. As you clap, you are walking out of your jail. As you dance, you are walking out of your jail. As you sing, you are walking out of your jail. As you clap, don't wait for the prayers. The deliverance will come as you open up your spirit. Scripture tells us that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. There was nothing that he did without his word. So tonight, as I ask you to humbly take your seats, prepare your hearts to receive the word, who is God? Metro City, this is going to be an Easter encounter like we have never had it before. Tonight, the Spirit of God has blessed us with awesome ministrations. And we have every expectation that he will speak to us from his word. And it has pleased the Lord. It has pleased the Lord. That of all the various churches across the world, the Lord will send us the youth director of all the churches across the world. An apostle of the Lord. A man filled with the wisdom and the leadership skills of God. I am proud to call him a brother and a friend. We were in India together, and the Lord used him mightily. I want to assure you that the Lord will use him mightily tonight. Open up your spirit to receive the word ministration, and afterwards he will lead us in prayer and impartation. Metro City VA, let us receive the apostolic word from the youth director and the patron of Pensa International, our very own Apostle Ebenezer Hagen. Let us please give him a big round of applause as he comes. Thank you. Bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, give a better clap of friend to Jesus. Do you know that man? Jesus, hallelujah. You want to put your hands together for Jesus. You want, you, you want to give a shout offering to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He is the reason why we are alive and why we are God's children. Hallelujah. I want to bless God so much for the privilege, really. A great privilege it is to stand before his people and share his word. And I, I also want to thank our dear area head, Apostle Samuel Atta. And then come to this house. Hallelujah. Thank our dear father, Pastor Kofi Ousubwache, and his lovely wife, Mommy, and the presiding elder and all the leaders. We have here in the house the deputy director of the youth ministry here in the U.S. Hallelujah. Are there some young men in the house? Oh, are there some young women in the house? Oh, hallelujah. I was so blessed with the administration of uh, New Life. And then also, our dear sister, if grace, God bless you. Hallelujah. We have been blessed so, so much. I want to engage you on the word of God. Of course, the conference, the convention to me is the blood of Jesus, my ransom. And I want to share with you on, on an aspect of it. The blood that unleashes a new covenant. The blood, hallelujah, that unleashes a new covenant. And I want us to go straight to the key text. We are going to the book of First, Timo, uh, First Peter. First Peter chapter 1. We'll be reading from verse 18 
to verse 20. I'll be doing it in the NIV, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to verse 20. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life that was handed down to you from your ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world. But was revealed in these last times for your sake. Hallelujah. I love this piece of scripture. For you know, for you know, I mean, you know that it was not with perish. I mean, money, gold and silver is one of the most important things in the whole world. But here transposed with the word of God. The Bible is saying, for you know that it wasn't with perishable things. Also in the scripture, he says, unworthy things. In the book of Luke, he says, unworthy things. He said, for if you are not faithful in little things like silver and gold, like money, then who will trust you with true riches? And so before the things of God, money, I mean, silver and gold lose where they belong in the standards of men. Hallelujah. He said that for you know that it was not with perishable things, said as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, which was handed down to you from your ancestors, but rather with the precious blood of Christ, who is a lamp without blemish. Hallelujah. Apostle Peter, obviously the chairman of the church after Jesus left, one of the topmost apostles, chosen by God to reveal the kingdom I mean, among the Gentiles. He writes to believers like you and I who had believed in Jesus, but whom, I mean, had become so persecuted. The battle in the faith had become so strong. And these people had now been scattered all over the world. But if you read verse 1, verse 2, and 3, he mentions many parts of the world, Galatia, Pontus, and other parts of the world, that these people had taken refuge. But yet the apostle finds reason to write to them. And he writes just to encourage them. He, he writes just to encourage them in the faith. And so the people who receive these words are people, I mean originally, like you and I fighting on in the Christian faith and whom the apostle taught that because of what they are suffering, because of what they were going through, I mean I was so happy when our sister here shared a testimony about, about all she went through last year, and then when she, immediately she said that when, when she entered this year, the Lord said, it's your time for victory, right? <laughs> I said, that is it. That is it. And so, yes, these believers were growing through excruciating times. I mean, moment of persecution. They were moment of trials, troublous moment. Apostle Paul, I mean, apostle, uh, Peter, he writes to them and encourages them on and, and spares them on. His message is to assure them. And I love how this, I mean, Apostle Peter, how he approaches this. There are two ways he does this work of encouraging them on. And those are the ones that, as I've been preparing, the Spirit of God has been bringing very, very loudly in my spirit that we are to share. First of all, he wanted to encourage them. He wanted to let them know who they are. Who they are. Suddenly, if a man of God or a woman of God really knows who they are, then the pressures and the time do not matter anymore. They do not matter anymore. Hallelujah. And so he decides to, I mean, encourage them and assure them of who they are. And then also about what was ahead of them. These two themes are very important. I'll throw some more light on it. And if you read this book that I begin to expound from verse 1 to 20, where we ended the reading, you are going to see this for yourself. And I want to encourage you uh, to, to do uh, just that. He said that to understand who you are, you must understand what has already happened. 
I mean, everybody is who they are because some things have happened in your life. Think about it, your spiritual life, your education. You are who you are today because some things have already happened in the past. And so in wanting to help them to know who they are, he opens their spiritual eye to know what has already happened in their lives as God's children. And I want to just give attention to this as I try to go into the past a bit to let you know some of the things Apostle brought up. Verse 1, 2, I read to 4. To God's elect exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, and beyond. You have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. And you have been chosen to be obedient to Christ through the sprinkling of his blood. Praise the Lord. Apostle Paul, sorry, why do I love Apostle Paul too much? As a matter of fact, I'm doing a current research on Apostle Paul. <laughs> so if Apostle Paul keeps coming up, please forgive me. Hallelujah. So Apostle Peter makes them understand, and by, by implication, makes us understand that every Christian has, I mean, a dimension of what God has done. I mean, uh, let me bring it this way for you to understand. In making them find courage, I already made you know that he wanted them to know who they are and then what lied ahead uh, of them. What lied ahead of them. And the way to make them know who they are was to reveal a little thing about their past. And I'm saying that every Christian has a past. And then we have the future and then the present. And I want you to get it very well. He told the believer that you are believers now because of what you have already experienced. And what you have already experienced is that God, the Father, chose you. Praise the Lord. You are going through persecutions. Life has become so hard. You don't know where to turn. But I want you to know that God, the Father, the Almighty God, chose you. And this belongs to your past. It is already in your bag. Every Christian carries a bag. When you look in that bag, there is the past files of what already belongs to you. And one of them is that God chose you. Praise the Lord. Every day in our lives, we must remind ourselves that we have been chosen by God. That out of all the people and out of everything that happened, the Lord God Almighty has chosen us. Hallelujah. He said that number one, you have been chosen by God. Number two, you have been sanctified by his spirit already. Then he said that you have been redeemed through the blood of Jesus. You have been redeemed through the blood of Jesus. You have been redeemed through the blood of Jesus. Then he said that you have been given a new birth. You have been given a new birth. You are no longer the old you. You are a new you in Christ. Hallelujah. And then the last one is that you have been set free from the bondage of an old way of life. You get this in reading the first Peter that I began to look at. And I read verse 2 to verse 4. And then also looking at the original text. And I love this five so much. Chosen by God. Sanctified by his spirit redeemed by the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, giving the new birth and set free from the bondage of an old life. Praise the Lord. Set free from the bondage of an old life. Let me throw just a bit of line on this last part, set free from the bondage of the old life, and then I'll continue in my past, present, and future Discussion I'm doing on God's grace and what has happened to us. And then I'll move on quickly from there. The key text said, for you know, brothers, you are going through all that. But I want to remind you that you know that you were not bought with perishable things such as silver or gold. But you were redeemed, number one, from your empty way of life. Handed to you from your ancestors. The apostle is saying that 
there is an inheritance, or there's an inheritance, sorry, that you took over from your ancestors. And this life, this, I mean, this heritage is a negative one. It's an empty way of life, a way of living, a way of expressing yourself, a way to life. That some way, somehow, it belongs to your, 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 your ancestors. He's talking about something that had continued from the fathers and all the way unto them. And then he said that the Lord Jesus Christ had set them free from that also. Hallelujah. I will come back to throw some more light, but I just took the last one to stretch it a bit. Saved from the bondage of an empty life that was inherited from their ancestors. Something that has ruled for long and which for some reason continued uh, among them. This past, present, and future dimensions of God's grace is what I'm talking about. The Bible said that, or the Bible revealed that this whole package that the Lord has for the, for the salvation of the sinner and which gives him all these wings, all these blessings already in their bag, which Apostle Peter is reminding them about. Reminding them about that look in the bag, look in there. And every Christian must look in that bag when life is becoming troublous, when, I mean, the demands of life have become tight on you, when persecutions are becoming many, when there are troubles and there are trials, you must look for that bag and then know again and convince yourself again, hallelujah, that you have been chosen by God, that you have been saved by the blood of Jesus, that the Holy Ghost has sanctified you. You belong to Christ and the Lord has held you free from the bondage of an empty way of life. In fact, in verse 10 of the chapter 1, he says that all this that God has done was an aspect of God's grace. And he, he explained that grace to be what is called the grace of salvation. And he said that this grace of salvation, that is able to bring this in our past life of saving us, of sanctifying us, breaking us free from all that, God planned it far ahead of time. And so it was like this. God Almighty designed that there is a time that I'm going to make the provision of the grace of salvation. And this is how God worked out this grace of salvation. God planned that it to be executed through the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that this Lamb was chosen before the world was created. And so even before the world was created, human beings were not born. God, the Father goes like this. Well, I have a plan somewhere along the line. And I'm going to throw out the grace of salvation. And through that grace, people are going to be chosen by me. They are going to be sprinkled by the blood. They'll be sanctified. They'll be free. And it will bring them assurance and joy to move on in the faith, no matter what happens to them. And because of that, I must make an arrangement. The plan of God was that this grace must be revealed through a lamb. And this lamb was chosen before the world was created. Now, God's plan was that though I've chosen the lamb now, we are not, I mean, we are not going to trigger it. It is for an appointed time. And so the lamb of God, I mean, as if a grace continued to lead us around the theme of the, the lamb of God, God chose the lamb and set an appointed time. And God ordained that this lamb, who is the Lord Jesus, must suffer. And through the suffering he will go through, he must die. Indeed. And then through his death, all this package of the grace of salvation will now be made possible. And so the Bible said that in the right time, God began to unfold the plan. The Lord Jesus was given... I mean, the Lamb of God without sin, without, I mean, blemish, who was spotless according to the reading I just did. And then in the right frame of time, the Bible said that he was released and then he began to suffer. Just like these believers, Apostle Peter is writing to, are suffering. And so in God's plan, the provision for the salvation, the one bringing in that the Lord Jesus must suffer too. 
And then through his suffering, he must die. And then when he has died, he would have paid for it. Hallelujah. So the Bible said that in the appointed time, Jesus, the Lamb of God, was given. He died by shedding his blood. And everyone who expresses faith in Christ Jesus and in his finished work is forgiven. And they have this package that I just spoke about. And so Apostle Paul or Apostle Peter writes to these people and tells them that this is the history of your salvation. The history of your salvation is that the Lamb of God who was planned long ago now was released, he has died. And if indeed Jesus has died, if indeed you have believed in Jesus, then it means that the package of your salvation that I began to talk about really belongs to you indeed. It has really happened. And this is the path of your salvation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Am I preaching to some sons of God in this place? The Lord would want us and take it as a prophetic word. Everybody in this room. That you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. And that you personally get to know and take it. That Jesus has died for you. Hallelujah. As long as you have believed in Jesus. That he has paid the price. And through what has been done. You have a package. That you are carrying along in this journey. Called the journey of your faith. In that journey. I mean in that bag. Is the assurance that you have been chosen. And that is your trump card. Hallelujah. That the blood of Jesus has washed you. And that is your trump card. That you have been sprinkled. By this blood that you have been sanctified. And that you have been set free from the bondage of an old life that was inherited from our ancestors or from our ancestors. Let me put the past there. Apostle Peter also tried to bring in a theme of the future. I told you I'm discussing the past, present, and the future dimension of of, of, of the grace as I make this point. He tells the believer that I also want you to be encouraged by knowing the future promise and the future plan that God has put in place for you. Hallelujah. And what he tells them is that the future package must give you what is called a living hope. A living hope. And that future plan or the future, he puts it this way, that God has kept an inheritance that can never perish or spoil or fade for you in heaven. And so what the apostle is really doing is to bring them together in the bracket of the past and the future to raise encouragement for them in the present for their journey in the Lord which had become tougher. In other words, put in very simple words, the apostle is saying that Whenever it becomes painful, whenever it becomes hard, whenever you can't push, sit down and remember and take pride and take strength in what the Lord has already accomplished. And the biggest of them is that Jesus has died for you and that you are saved. Hallelujah. But let your joy also come from an assurance of a promise that God has kept for you in heaven. Every one of us serving God must find ourselves grounded in this too. That eventually what gives you the strength to soldier on in your Christian life is a full assurance of your salvation. That you know you have a hold on. That you allow the devil to, excuse me, fool you about on what has already been done for you. But at the same time, hold on to what is called the living hope. The living hope, you believe God, that God has arrangement for your life, that the word of God is true, hallelujah, that the glory God has said and the inheritance we have can never fade away, it cannot perish and it cannot spoil. And because of that, you hold on and keep on. You hold on and keep on. This is very, very important. Bringing the past and bringing the future into the present to encourage us to move on in our walk 
with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So in the present I come, having looked at the past, having looked at the future, and I've said that he wants them to lay hold on the future by the promise of God, the future aspect of God's grace for their salvation, and then the past also, and to hold this very well and find reason for responsible Christian life. That I'm ready to suffer and live a holy life. I'm ready to suffer and do the right thing. That no matter what, because of Jesus and because of the promise he has, he has for me, I am going to go through this. Somewhere last week, the Lord began to minister to me strongly on the theme of righteousness. And the Spirit of God was telling me that, you know, we easily think that it's only people who win a lot of souls for the Lord who will be rewarded. But the Lord reminded me and taught me very well in those moments that standing for God in righteousness, that I want to stand for Jesus. I know this is wrong. I won't do that. And you hold on, I mean, in your righteousness all the way to the end. It is a hard thing. It's a difficult thing. Because of that, there's an award. I mean, there's a reward in heaven. The crown of righteousness that the Lord will give to all those people. Praise the Lord. There is also another award category or reward category called the crown of life that the Lord gave to everybody who went through persecutions, trials. Look at someone like a person to me. Go through all of this war in Liberia and then paralysis and all. And he's in it all the way till he dies. It's like no joy again. The Lord has a reward for all those people. Hallelujah. And so let me just use the advantage of where I've got to right now to encourage everybody who must find strength to move in in the Lord. Look at what Jesus has done for you and bring yourself joy in your conviction that you are no ordinary person. You are known and chosen by God. And Jesus has paid for that for you. Hallelujah. Then commit yourself to our forward movement of making sure to endure in righteousness, in persecution, and in order. And through responsible Christian living, you live responsibly as the Lord wants you all the way to the end. This is what Apostle Paul or Apostle Peter is doing to the believers. And it's so important as he gives them this assurance in all that. But as he does that, and as we have been reading the 18 to, 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 uh, the 18 to 20 that I kept on reading, which I want to touch on for a last round, and then I'll move quickly from this point. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, handed to you from your ancestors. He talks and brings in the ancestors as a certain way of life, something that they could not overcome and has lingered and moved on all the way. He said that the blood of Jesus, you know that you have been redeemed from that already. It is the precious blood of God who did that for you. He said that, or the picture apostle gives us is that because of sin, Men are held captive. And men are held captive like our dear pastor was giving us the picture. Think about it. That because of sin, I mean, it goes this way. The devil tempts us to sin. And then once we sin, he becomes master over us. And then he traps us within. And so the one who is not born again is under the control of the devil. They cannot even, they don't have the power to rise up to exercise choice that I, can, I won't do that again. They have lost it. And they lost it to the devil who is holding control over them. And because they lost it, they were held as prisoners. And because they were held as prisoners, the devil controlled them to do what he wanted to do with them. This is where the issue is. That everybody under the, 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 the I mean, the masterhood or, or however we put it, of the devil by way of sin, they lose the power to rise up to say, Minyebiu. 
I remember when I was serving as a pastor uh, in the north. I went to preach to a man. He was a heavy drunkard and he used to smoke heavily. Then I told him, sir, give your life to Jesus. This smoking may kill you. He said, oh, my son, don't worry. It has even killed me already. I prayed to him on Friday. Monday, he died. Indeed, the smoking had killed him already. We have prayed to people who have expressed, oh, don't worry. Mr. Son, three days time, I won't do that again. Some of them are broken down. I remember my wife preaching to a certain Rastafarian somewhere in Accra. He said, I'm even tired. I want to give my life to Jesus. And I want the baptism of fire because I'm tired of life. Desperation. People who said they have lost it all. There's no hope because I, I try, sir. And then some who express the desire that they can come out. You know, working in your ministry, there are some people who are caught in what is called fornication. Fornication. No matter what they do. I remember we went for a crusade on one of the campuses and this young lady, I mean, she, she must sleep with a young man every day. Yes, she will die. And when, and when we started the prayer and you see how she's manifesting, you know that really she will die if she doesn't get that. The Bible talks about those who are held in prison by the power of darkness. This is how it goes. He bribed them, he trapped them like the case of a horse and a carrot all the way and all the way into the cage. And then they find other prisoners there, their masters that guide them. Every cry for help to come out, you are resisted. You are held under a master who is controlling your life and it goes on. Now, think about it. These slaves give birth in the same cage. And as they give birth to newer people, they are born into in a world, right? But they are born into slavery. And what the apostle is saying is that you inherited a certain way of life. This way of life seems to have been passed on from your fathers to you. The way it is, you have inherited it. And it has continued all the way up to now, up to now. It has continued all the way up to now. In this picture of the prison, the devil has a right. Listen to the word of God, I'm telling you. Everybody who continues to sin, the devil has the right of way to work in your life. That's why Jesus said, <laughs> what did he say? I go my way, the prince of the world cometh and he has nothing with me. With sin in your life, the devil has the legal ground. And in that way, there was no hope out. And what the apostle Paul is teaching is that the master who stood over us and caught us in this perpetuity of sin and all its implications, the bondage, the lifestyles, the way of life and all that, he continued all the way until God himself came in. That is why God set a plan that the lamp must die. He made an arrangement and set a time. And the Bible says in the right time, the Lord Jesus was given. Hallelujah. Now, the wisdom of God at play. If I were God, I would just tell Jesus, you know, the devil is nothing for us. Go kick him out. Bring out the slaves. But what is the value? I mean, what is the value of it? The wisdom of God at play. Jesus approached. There, there was a negotiation. Forgive my transactional language. But think about it just in the raw terms. That silver and gold could not pay the price. Silver and gold lost its value. And really, silver and gold have a limit. We have about 17 that are more important than silver and gold. The Bible talks about it. Wisdom is one of them. The anointing is another. Life is one of them. Peace is another of them. Health is another of them. Silver and gold could not. The Bible says that you were redeemed. And there he paints the picture. That the blood of Jesus or what Jesus did was to pay a ransom. What is the ransom? A ransom is the amount charged for the release of a prisoner. 
So when Jesus came, think about it, that maybe it went transactional, how much no money could pay. And the apostles said that you were redeemed with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. You were redeemed with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. And our district pastor is saying that find yourself in the word of God. Know and take your place that the blood of Jesus is your ransom. It has been paid. You are free. You know, in the word of God, there's something called propositional truth. And then we have the, the reality. In the word of God, we have what is called the indicative. You find it many times in the Bible. God said this. And then you may find yourself here and God may say, my son, my daughter, I said that. And God wants you to jump into that. So what the apostle is doing is that the way they are going through persecution, if I do not strengthen them, they will not rise into the strength of who they are as God's children in this time of difficulty. Tonight, we came to encourage somebody. Hallelujah. Jesus has paid it all. No price beyond the blood of Jesus. Satan would have quoted it. Jesus paid. And he paid indeed. I mean, I've been reading yesterday and today all the day about Jesus and all the way they kept denying him. One of his apostles went for money, denied him. All the apostles denied him. The chairman, the guy who was to be the chairman, Peter, he denied him three times. Small girls before them. I mean, before Pontius Pilate, Jesus said the truth. And Pontius Pilate, who could have helped him, said, carry him on. And on and on it went. Finally, my reading brought me to where the soldiers put him and said, and, and crowned him, I mean, like a king. They put, I mean, all the way the rope and then put a staff in his hand and then put a crown of thorns there. And the Bible said they spot on him and said, are you the king of the Jews? Here come the king of the Jews. Then they took the staff from his hand, struck him on the head and all of them, spot on him. And then the Bible said they continued to beat him about to make fun of him. That is that Jesus went through it all. And it was agonizing. In fact, before that, he had prayed that, oh God, looking at Senia, I don't know, and come apart. If it all left me alone, let it can there be a different arrangement? However, not as I will. When he was praying this prayer, three times he prayed. The Bible said that as he was praying, clots of blood. Do you know clots of blood? A serious medical condition. So it wasn't easy, but Jesus paid. And the word of God that I'm bringing you by the spare of the spirit is that it belongs to you to rise up to possess what Jesus has paid for in your life. Oh, hallelujah. I said it belongs to you to rise up. And the devil is so skimish. I mean, the schemes, the devil may oppress you. The devil may oppress you. There are some children of God who are having dreams and there's a good who has married them in the realms of the spirit. There are still children of God who say they, are, they, are, they, are, they see themselves pregnant and, and spirits. They are so children of God who when they see, just for a second, a demon comes to have an affair with them. They are still children of God and many things are happening. What it means is that Jesus has paid it. But they are not holding the bag of what belongs to the past. Tonight, your prayer is that you have risen up to take whatever is already yours in your bag. And the devil has no place in your life. Oh, am I talking the word of God to somebody? When the children of God know to rise up, as Apostle Peter will warn them, they re that you rise up, the devil is full. Somebody told me that one of my children is chewing the mattress in her house. She chews it. Has, I mean, all the, while this arm and the mattress is getting, I mean, all the way to the halfway. That is a demon at work. So tonight, anybody under the power of the enemy, we begin to set you free. Father, I demand that every prison door, if any, in this place be open. Amen. Right now, be open. Be open. Amen. Be open. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Anything that Jesus has paid for, you have no business carrying it. Hallelujah. Amen. We rise up by faith and take over what belongs to us. Can I have a living amen on that one? Amen. That is the word of God. You have, the ransom has been paid. You have been redeemed. Friends, the blood of Jesus set sinners free. The blood of Jesus is able to engage people under the control of the enemy and it dislodges them and set them free indeed. All bondages of addictions, fears of all kinds, fear of death, strange things, the blood of Jesus deals with it. That is why it's a ransom. It pays in the currency beyond the reach of any other currency. That is the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus works today. Hallelujah. Demonic oppressions and every kind of thing. It does that. If you do not know Jesus, you are not under the cover of this blood. I want you to give your life to Jesus. But the last part of my message is that When Jesus comes and pays the ransom and he shuts the, I mean, he swings the prison doors open and says that, come out. I have paid it all. Come out. Jesus went around and began to announce that the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God has come. The Bible said that he came to preach the gospel to those who were under the bondages of the enemy and to open the prison doors. That's what Jesus came to do. The Bible said he came to destroy the work of the enemy. What I love about Jesus is that when he announces our freedom, he doesn't just say, pay, call. What about if I'm arrested again? As I move out, is the devil not there again? So the blood of Jesus does not just set us free. He brings us out and he puts us into a new covenant. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, you went and, 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 and did all that, and the prisoner came out, and you said they should just go. What about an arrangement for them? What about rehabilitation? What about setting them in school? What about giving them a career? What about helping them? You would have brought them into a new dispensation. And that's exactly what Jesus did. And I want us to read from the book of Hebrew, I will be on my descent very soon so that we can pray quickly. Hebrew chapter 12. Hebrew chapter 12. Let's look at maybe verse 24 and 25. Maybe let me read from 23. So he said you have come. He's talking about the New Testament believer. You have come to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. And you have come to God, the judge of all. And to the spirit of the righteous made perfect. Then he says, you have come to Jesus, who is the mediator of a new covenant. And to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than that of Abel. Now, the blood of Jesus pays the ransom. Then when he brings you out, he begins a new deal, a new transaction with the Father God. Amen. Father God, I brought them out. But are we leaving them that way? What are the new arrangements? What are you rolling out? The blood of Jesus, I mean, speaks better than, I mean, it speaks better things. The blood of Abel shot for vengeance. 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 Are they going for vengeance? The blood of Jesus said, Father, what new arrangement? Father, what about them? So that is what the blood of Jesus does. We will do a, a, a couple of other readings and quickly. It sets us into a new covenant. In other words, the blood releases or unleashes for us a new covenant. A new covenant that we may have to walk in that covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is a covenant with the overseer of our souls. According to 1 Peter 2.25, you may read it. On your own later. It's a covenant. And listen. Immediately you begin to read the Bible. And sin entered into the world. God began to talk about a new covenant. God began to talk. About a new covenant. He said well I had an old arrangement. Sin has set in. It looks like it's no longer going to bring the results. Let's go for a new covenant. 
And so right there, even in the Old Testament, when God's people have fallen into sin, God has begun to talk about a new covenant. Originally, according to Genesis, can you project Genesis 3.8 quickly? Genesis 3.8. Genesis 3.8. And when the man heard the work of the Lord God Almighty in the garden. All right. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid. What God used to do was to walk in the cool of the garden like this. Maybe. <laughs> when they heard, did you read, the, did you see the sound? The other verse, uh -huh. the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden. Who is that? Oh, almighty God coming for a visit. This is how God meant it in the original covenant. But when sin came in, according to Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, sin brings a distance between us and God. And so, because of sin, God is not approaching us. And because of sin, the devil takes us captive. And God's covenant, or God's arrangement through Jesus, set a new covenant. A new covenant that is bringing God. In fact, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 3. Kindly project it for me. Let me see this quickly. Revelation 21, this is God's new covenant. This is God's new covenant. Revelation 21, 1 to 3. At the last end, this is what God is working out. Revelation, yeah, 21 and then down. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first earth and the first, I mean, heaven and earth had passed away. And there was no more, yeah, let's go. There was no longer any sea. Yes, too. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed. Let's go. For her husband. Uh-huh. Let's go. The last verse. And I heard a loud voice from the throne, from the very center of the throne. Now, according to the Bible, there are only two that are the center of the throne, either the Father God or the Lamb of God, who is also occasionally said to be at the center of the throne. And I heard a loud word from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. Hallelujah. This is God's intent. And now the blood of Jesus is working this out. Jesus brings us to a new place that this must be worked on. The Jewish prophet and the scholars of the Old Testament, they always understood this to be some time coming in the future when a new heaven and a new earth will be given or created. But Apostle Paul brought a new understanding in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, he said that, and if anyone is in Christ, if you can show that, please. It's a climax and then I'll come down. If anyone is in Christ, if anyone is redeemed by Christ, anyone is plunged into the new covenant. Listen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The Old Testament prophet and, 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 and the scholars, they say that it's a future time, new heaven, new earth. That is what is going to bring a new creation. But Apostle Paul is saying that if anyone is in Christ, they give their life to, to Jesus. Don't wait for a future heaven and earth alone. But I want to tell you that the new creation has come. Jesus brings us the new creation. Hallelujah. This new creation is the new covenant that we talk about. Jesus mediates it. Makes it possible. What does it mean? He brings God and man together in the perfect union of life. That is walking and winning on the strength of God. Praise the Lord. That is walking and winning in the strength of God. This new life is a life that we live together with God. God dwells in us and we are also with him through his spirit. It's a new life lived in the strength of the Lord. 
It's a new life lived in the power of the Lord. The strength of the Lord means that we are able. We are able to overcome sin. The power of the Lord means that his hand is upon us. And he uses us for his will and his business. Hallelujah. This new life, this new covenant is a transformative personal relationship with God. It's a life you walk with God and you see that day by day you are changing to be like Jesus. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It is a life of grace and love and peace. Not a life under the law and compulsion. It's a life of joy. You choose to love God and you do it with all your strength. Praise the Lord. And the more you find yourself in this love and you let the love take you, then you have become perfect. A new life of freedom that has walked. If you listen to me, I say that it's a life with God. His strength supplies our weakness. It's a life of victory. It's a life lived in the strength in our inner man, given by the Spirit of God, who lives within us. In the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost didn't live within the people. But in this new covenant, God makes his spirit live inside of us. And so we move on as overcomers. Hallelujah. And day by day, we are transformed into that glorious image. This life of God that we move on must be kept through your prayer, through your Bible study, through driving yourself to church, and through all the things that you must be. It is an easy life lived with God. Tonight, the word of God has been spoken. Praise the Lord. And true, two prayer points have been lifted that everything that Jesus has already paid for, the Lord needs you and I to work with him to get them broken because they don't have a place. And then the second one is that we need the strength of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, Amen. to walk in this new identity that the Lord has given us. It's an overflowing life filled with all the provisions the Lord gives. One day the Lord told me, I kept praying, that, oh God, Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, fill me. And the Lord, the Holy Ghost told me, Kojo, you keep calling me that you need me to fill you. Do you know I don't come alone? I come with all my plus, plus, plus. Come with my fruit, my gift. I come with my glory. Do you have room enough for us? We come to take over. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to rise up on your feet as a child of God. And I want you to begin to thank God for his word for a brief moment. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you may open your mouth wherever you are. Your word is that, oh God, we want to thank you. Yes, Lord. The Bible said that the word of the king is majestic. There is power in God's word to bring about what he speaks about. You want to say thank you, Jesus, for your word. Come on, open your mouth. Let prayer rise. Thank you, Lord. We want to bless you, oh God. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Remende salama kota boni miketende luri ambara kosh kapari atona mehende lemene me kapali anana masuli ande riko bahatanda masota li monde bahaya katanda marosia ori ampari akoli solomotali. Come on, lift up your voice. Your prayer is that thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love for my life. The Lord must hear your thank you tonight. We have been redeemed. Thank you for your way. Thank you for your glorious way. Thank you for your glorious way. Thank 
here for all that are in vain. You have made glorious provisions for us, Lord. Come on, let prayer rise. Come on, Shanti. Lele be hali matoya. Rebe me me kapoli analamanda. Reke katole mahosa. Rebe kapota yanda. Rene ke jose. Mama mama mahaya. Shanti Lord. Bolo bo kabe. Bolo bo katanda. Mara makapaya. Shanti Lord. Shanti Lord. Shanti Lord. Your word is released upon your church. Your word is released. Upon your church, your word is released. Upon your church, your word is released. Upon your church, to bear fruit tonight. Reke pali, reke patosa, reke babarianda. Thank you for choosing us. Now listen, you want to lift prayer, you are saying, Father, thank you for choosing me. Thank you for the sprinkling of the blood. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming me. Thank you for the new birth. Yes. Thank you that I'm new in the name of Jesus. Come yes. on, let your thank you rise up. Let your thank you look into your bar. Look into your old bar tonight. Look into your old bar tonight. You have been chosen. You are not ordinary. You have been chosen. You are not ordinary. You have been chosen. I am bar. Thank you for the finished work. Thank you for the past. Lord, my Rasaya. And the future. Thank you, Lord, for the present. Listen, we are moving by precision tonight. I'm going to release us into a general prayer. And after that, I remember some time ago I was preaching somewhere. And I was sharing an experience when I was the Pensa president at Tech. There was somebody among the members who used to say that whenever exam is approaching, a voice will be speaking to her. You will fail. So don't even go and write exam. You will fail. Don't go. You will fail. And as the exam is approaching, it will be increasing. You will fail. If and when she goes and sits behind the paper, you will fail. You will fail until she has failed indeed. This was a pencil member. One day after church, she came to tell us, and we were angry with the executive. We laid hands on her. Hallelujah. And dislodged the hand of the enemy. Yes. She was free. Amen. Now she's an awesome mommy. Amen. Now, I was preaching somewhere in the youth camp. The Holy Ghost said, would you share that testimony? Then I shared it. Then he said, now, announce that if there's anybody here who is also hearing the voice of the enemy, uh, they should come forward. Many of them came. That day I learned that we can be in the house of God and sit down and be fooling us. Yes. Tonight, after the general, after I've released you first one, we are going to, don't worry, it's not about the voice. Don't worry, where we have got to, just release yourself. Anybody that you think Satan is misbehaving in your life, we don't have time, I know already. Satan is misbehaving. The bag that the Lord has given you about the past blessing of your salvation. Yeah. He's joking with that bag. We want to pray with you. All of us are going to join by faith and pray with you. And we are trusting God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Something is not right. And yeah. you know that this is beyond the common sense. Yeah. We, we are all going to close our eyes. Yeah. But before I call, shall we all pray? We are telling God that Father, let your word bear fruit in my life. Hallelujah. Let your word bear fruit in my life. Tell God that I'm God. Listen, listen. When God sent the angel Gabriel with the, and said, Behold, the Spirit of God will come upon and, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and what you consider will be of God. That moment, Mary began to get pregnant. Check yes. the dates. The Word of God creates. Psalm 29. He said, When God speaks, even the mountains keeps. It jumps away. The Bible says, When God speaks, it shatters the cedars of Lebanon. 
So you want to thank God, believe God as a child of God. That dear Lord, thank you for your word over my life. I receive your word. Ah, yes. Let the power in your word bear fruit in my life. Begin to pray. Yes. Come on, lift your voice in prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let your word move over your people. Let your word move over your people. Let your word bear fruit. I am the Makuba. Jesus, Ora Mamanda Bosai Tataya. Let the word of God flow over the church in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, lift, lift your hand, lift your hand. Wherever you are, lift your hand. Mount Sasso, Mount Sasso, lift your hand tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the power of the word of yes. God over your life. Yes. I release the power yes. of the word of God in the name of over Jesus. everybody's life. In the name of Jesus. May the word of God move like a torrent. Yes. May it fill every valley. Yes. May it bring down every mountain. In the name of Jesus. May it strengthen every crookedness. In the name of, In Jesus. The name of Jesus. I rebuke every negative situation in this place by the power of the word of God in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus tonight I contend with the work of the enemy in anybody's life I command it to be shut I command it to be broken I arrest in the name of Jesus the hand of the enemy we bring back your son we bring your son home we bring your son home yes. come on lift your hand lift your hand father let your word penetrate your people oh lord i'm talking about the miracle of the word of god Marco Bate Malusa Yande, Nebarosa Tandaya, let every fire be quenched, let every fire be quenched, let every fire be quenched, let the rivers come, let the waters come, let the waters come, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the enemy, Roma Kobato, Mayapaye, at this point, we can do only two prayers tonight. Yes. You are here. It may, it may not be your own self or whatever, but feel free. You see that there is something going on that the devil is behind. He is joking with your old back. Please come forward. Come bari hatsos kapara ndoshkaya. Lora mandara basandara bashikora bahaya. Leba bota yenda sola bahaya. Come on, close your eye and be in prayer tonight. Be in prayer tonight. Lo baye barosa talamanda. Ayanda mokebeta yende setaloas. Orimando ya moli andala basandara ba. Lora baba shandara ba. Eleba ronda la masandara ba boye. Eba botale. Ema rosa tanda maya. I said. Listen. Listen. I'm saying that. The devil sometimes can take advantage of us. Yes. Yeah. Made many, many. The devil can fool us in the house of God. Yes. Yeah, you can be carrying a real burden. Yeah. I'm saying that anything strange in your life, in your family, whatever, anything that you yourself, you sense that, you sense the devil is at work. Yes. Yeah. 
Shall we all close our eyes, all of us? Please line up here. Line up, line up. Move in the middle, please. Line up. We are in prayer. The rest of us, we are in prayer. First, our time is already gone. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please be fast. Our time is gone. Oh, hallelujah. Let's Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. New life worship, come on up. All right, God bless you. God bless you. Those of you at the front, lift up your hand. Say, dear Lord Jesus, tonight I belong to you. I believe that you are the son of God. And you came to die to save me from my sins. And so, Lord, I receive you into my life. As my Lord yes. and my Savior. Yes. I will serve you all the days of my life. Yes. Lord, I belong to you. Mm. And Lord, you have put me in the new covenant. Oh, you have put me in the new covenant. The new covenant. By your spirit. By your spirit totally. Now, open your mouth and say that. And now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that the devil no, has no part in my life and I denounce him and the work of any demon in my life I said in my life and tonight I pathway Jesus name I pathway Jesus name come on say it like you have faith I pathway in Jesus name with every work in Jesus name of the devil in Jesus name in my life it has come to an end in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Can we have some of the Father join us? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now I'm going to release you, those of you at the front, be praying and declare your freedom. In the name of Jesus, Father, I take authority tonight. And I bind every work of the enemy. It no longer has a place. And so tonight, in the name of Jesus, every work of the enemy. I command it broken and shut it. Kapala Manda. Oh, Rabba Bosa.
you want to pray we can run it up just lift up your hand father in the name of the lord jesus tonight we declare by your word and by your spirit lord every life in this place is touched every life standing in the front is touched in the name of the lord jesus we have denied the enemy any move in anybody's life father we cover them with the blood of jesus Releasing them into a better covenant. Which is worked out by the blood of Jesus. Father, keep them. We trust them into your hand. That you let your strength continue, Father. In their lives. We give you praise. We give you glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord has moved in this place. You can keep today's date down. The Lord has glorified himself. Come on, give him the glory. You can sit down. We want to lift up our hands. No, those of us, a last, le- this is the last place. All of us, we are not sitting down. I meant that those here should sit down. Humbly, this is the last one for just for about three minutes. And then we'll go. Just raise up your hand. Yes, if you can. If only you can be on your feet. Sorry to be saying this, but when I was praying about this program, the Lord made me see that I mean, water had started like it's raining and it's, it's either leaking from somewhere or the water is coming from a high level and it's coming from all over. And then gradually it was rising and then it was rising. Yes. Then it was rising. Then, then it was like the place was flooded all the way to somewhere. I mean, and then it kept rising. Raise up your hand. Holy Ghost. I'm praying over the church right now. And I'm asking that, oh God, let the rivers of the spirit, Father, begin to trickle in. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, release them from the north, south, east, and west. Let there be the growing of the levels of the spirit in everybody's life. Father, we come to minister tonight. We add on to everybody. We add on to everybody. Let the levels come up. 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 We release the workings of the Holy Ghost in your life. We release the workings of the Holy Ghost. We release the beauty of the Holy Ghost. Listen, I release the fragrance of the Holy Ghost. As a child of God, when you walk around, it should be the smell of the Spirit. I make a bekatua, la merienda le makosa, lorienda le makubaya, remendo satuna yende, lora banda masota. Holy Ghost, bring your church to a new level. In the name of Jesus, the Bible said in Ezekiel, it said the Lord revealed to me, I saw water trickling from the altar towards the east gate. And when the angel measured a thousand cubits, I saw water to the level. You remember what I'm saying? Yes. The chairman said that who is afraid of water that is only up to, what do we call this? Ankle. Ankle. Who is afraid of water that is up to the ankle? Children even play football in it. If you're a Christian and your Holy Ghost level is anchor level, will be unfound serious. But chairman said that when the, it's rising, rising and it gets to the knee, when walk. people are crossing, they cross like this, even if they will play, it restricts their movement. But when it gets to the waist level, yes, people are afraid. afraid. They walk like this. They don't even know. If you get to this level, you are dangerous. Yes. The Bible said, he measured at last thousand. And behold, the river that nobody could swim across. Tonight, Holy Ghost, let the rivers come up. Pray for MCC. Lord, let the rivers come up. Let the rivers come up. 
Let the rivers come up. Let the rivers come up. Let the rivers come up. Let the rivers come up. In the name of Jesus, I release the gift of the Holy Ghost. I release the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mo baika batona baya, ayanda makuria katanda. Mo bayi makibahana. Let it rain. Let it rain. Holy Ghost, bring it up. Holy Ghost, bring it up. Let the spirit of your people, Father, let the spirit of your people receive an inundation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said, and now the Jericho was overflowing its banks. Yes. The Bible said in the days of Noah, the Bible said that and the water rose and covered all the mountains. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, may the waters come on. In the name of Jesus. And we pray for the entire church. Announcing a new dispensation of the workings of the Holy Ghost. Everybody bringing the song of the Spirit. A word of encouragement. A word of prophecy. The workings of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Father, we move your church on. In the strength and the beauty of the Lord. And I call it so by the word of the living God. Be praised, Lord, as you lead us from strength to strength. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And what do we say to our dear apostle? God bless you, apostle. And just so you are all aware, Apostle will also be at the PENSA conference in July. Amen. All right. At this moment, we want to take our offering. So with that, I want to call on Deacon Sarah Wayo and minister, backed by Minister Danny Nete. Deacon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. First, uh, what do we say to our apostle? God, God bless, bless you. you so much. God bless you for the administration. Um, I sense in my spirit, before, before we do this offering, I sense in my spirit strongly that you shouldn't, you are not going to stay here, wait till Sunday to give a mega offering. If you, if you trust in God, if you believe in God, I had this poster on my, um, in my, on my status, which says that God, it says that um, you can, I completely forgot, it, it has to do with, it says that God moves, God can move in three days. So if you trust God that he can move in three days, right? You don't have to wait till Sunday to give your mega offering. If you believe strongly that you, you, you have a covenant with God, I want you to, if you can, if you can, just pray over your substance, right? And bring it before the altar. This is not a regular offering. If you can, I have mine here. I prayed over it. And I have it, I'm going to lay it before the altar. And I'm trusting God that by Sunday, whatever I have laid before him, he's going to answer me. So at this time, before we do the offering, right, if you have your substance, if you have your special offering that you want to lay before the altar, I would invite you to come forward, pray over it, and lay it in the bowl before we take our offering. This is something that I sense strongly. So I would invite you, anyone, if you feel like you need to make that altar, bring it before the altar, please. Do it. This is the, this is the voice of the Lord. Do it. And you will see something mega in your life by Sunday. At this time, I want to invite... Um, Minister Daninete to lead us in a time of offering. As we do this, this is a command. If you obey this command, trust me, you are going to see something. Something, something that will blow your mind by Sunday. 
Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, church. No, your amen is, is, is sick. Hallelujah, church. Now, if you know Christ has died and Christ is risen for you, can you lift up your voice and give God a shout of praise? Can you be on your feet and give God a shout of praise? You have been redeemed. You have been ransomed. Somebody lift your voice and give God a praise. If you know and you know and you know that the goodness of God has been shown on you, come on, lift your voice and give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 All right, let's praise Jesus now. Come on. All right. Put your hands together. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Where are my young people? We say great praises. We praise you, Lord.
we go home. I love the energy. Out on the out one.
Metro City. Yes, yes. Whew. Look to your neighbor, tell them you don't want to miss tomorrow. You don't want to miss tomorrow. Wow. See, the house of God is fun. There's joy in the house of God. Hallelujah. In all that singing and dancing, before we leave here tonight, we would be remiss if we didn't allow, if we have some people among us here who have not given your life to Christ. The message that we heard this evening, knowing that you are chosen and you are being kept by God and you are part of this new creation. If you are not in him, those promises are not for you. Do we have anybody among us who does not know Christ and who wants to know Christ? We have our pastor and our apostle here who can share a prayer with you. If you're all going to make it to heaven, let's say amen. amen. All right, with that being said, uh, Secretary, we want to call on Secretary to give us the announcement, and then right after that, uh, Deaconess Mama Priscilla will give us the closing prayer, and then we will receive uh, apostolic benediction after that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. We want to bless God for how far he's brought the church. We are PIWC, the best church in the whole of DMV. Hallelujah. If this is your first time worshiping with us, give us a wave. First time worshiping with us? Oh, I see a wave in the back. We would like to get to know you. We would love to get to know you. So if you don't mind walking towards me. Oh, come on. Come on, mama, walk towards me. Come on. We want to get to know you. Hallelujah. Oh, there's, I, I'm told there's a lot of people. So please don't be shy. Oh, we want to know you so we can love on you. When we see you at the store, we can, we can, we can know who you are. We are PIWC. We are privileged to have you in our midst. So if you introduce yourself to us. Amen. Amen. Um, God is good. It's a wonderful moment. I'm so thrilled and moved. My name is Nurse D. And I was invited by Sister Rosina to visit today. Um, a nurse. I work for Capital Care in Hospice. Thank you so much to Pastor for the word, and I'll be visiting. Hello, I came with, a with Brianna. My name is Ava, and this is my first time coming here, and I had a great time. Amen, 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 amen. All right, this is Ms. Denise. She's visiting us, and she would love to worship with us. Amen. The hospitality team, see, Mama, see that young lady waving in the back? She will take care of you. We'll see you after service. Amen. Amen. If you are watching us online, I know the fun is not that much online if you're home. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., Join us here. Join us here tomorrow at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Join us here tomorrow. And your dancing will be different. If you're working tomorrow morning and you are home tomorrow night, 7 p.m. on the dot, we are here. If you experience at home, you don't, you don't want to know the feeling in the, in the sanctuary. Make your way here. 10712 Richmond Highway in Lawton, Virginia, and your life will not be the same. Amen. Also, if you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior online, we encourage you to find a Bible believing church, ground yourself in the Lord, and grow in your journey with Him. If you are in the DMV area, we are not a far drive. Again, we are in Lawton, Virginia. Do well to join us. Amen. I've said all the announcements. Baptism, yes, one thing I forgot. Tomorrow we are baptizing, 2 p.m., 2 p.m. 
If you have not yet been baptized, if you've not yet been baptized by immersion, you went somewhere and they sprayed water on you, that is not baptism. You were born young and were baptized at birth. It doesn't count. If you are above the age of 13 and you can consciously make that call, then please do not hesitate. See myself, see pastor or see presiding elder and we'll get you baptized. Amen. Closing prayer, please. Love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. Our beautiful Nazarene, our loving friend, the Father that has chosen us, that has ransomed us, Father, tonight we bless you. Father, tonight from the core of our spirit, we say thank you. We bless you so much for the joy in you. We thank you for, you started with that yesterday. And Lord, today is another. And we know that you are taking us higher and higher. And by the time the service is over, we will be flowing to the brim. We bless you tonight. And tonight, we thank you so much for the vessel that you used. What an honor to have the apostle to reveal the present and the future blessings of us, the chosen generation, a peculiar people, a blood bought church, ransomed for a purpose, ransomed to be unleashed. We bless you tonight. We honor you tonight. We glorify your name tonight. And Father, this is our prayer. To see thee more clearly. To love thee more dearly. And to follow thee more nearly. Tonight as we leave, we commit ourselves into your hands. Holy Spirit, we are praying that let this bubbling that is in our spirit never stop. Let it bubble and bubble and bubble. That your beauty will be seen in us wherever we go. We bless you and honor you. We honor you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Shall we receive the benediction? Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May your faith be anchored strong in Christ. May the Lord cause you to be firmly grounded in him. And now we breathe on you by the spirit of the living God. Be blessed in all you do. May you be nourished by the almighty one. Continue to bear fruit in all you do. May you flourish on the left, on the right. May the Lord carry you on in joy and glory as his new creation. Be blessed. Amen.
Hello. 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 Be a test of. Hello? Try, try two. Try two. Try, try two. Two, two, two. Test the mic, try one, two. Now for more, huh? <clears throat> try, test the mic, try one, two. One, two. One, two, two. Two, two, two. Hello? 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 Hello, hello, hello. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. God is good all the time. All the time God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Give it up for Jesus. Give it up for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Put it up for Jesus. Annabelle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. God is good. All the time and all the time, God is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Daniel. Hallelujah. Amen. Nida, can I borrow you? Yes. Don't worry. How does it sound? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. What okay? Praise the Lord. What? Oh, me too. I'm doing my job. You've brought me, Lord, I've come to worship you. So see how far you've brought me. You called me. Um, the one you gave me, I think mine was my two. I kept pressing it, pressing it, pressing it. I pressed it once, I turned it off, I turned it back on, and I wasn't hearing anything. I know, I, I, for some reason I couldn't hear myself. When I turned it on, I tapped it, then I heard it. And then when I tapped it again, and I was like, I, did I mute the thing? So I was turning back. Praise the Lord. What was the echoing? No, up, like you can hear it. It was like We need to do sound check, seriously. 8.30. 8.30. Plus, somehow the prayer team's mic ended up getting mixed up with us. I don't know who gave it to him. We didn't collect it. I know, but I'm saying somehow one of them ended up putting their mic there. So, you, I don't know, you might want to talk to your prayer team. It's not us, so all I noticed it was a they will know their mic. I don't know, maybe she the person mistakenly put it up there. No no, one of the mics ended up with the choir mics. And before I noticed, oh, I'm sorry. Before I noticed, someone was using the prayer team's mic on the platform. And so I don't know who put it up there. Was using one of them. Oh, the all black one. So that's probably on. We know our mics, my only thing. Uh, I don't know. Before I, I noticed, I saw on platform and noticed somebody had it, so I didn't know. But the thing is, 